Welcome to the Spoken Tutorial on Creating New Content Types. In this tutorial, we will learn about creating a new content type and adding fields to content type. To record this tutorial, I am using Ubuntu Operating System, Drupal 8 and Firefox Web Browser. You can use any web browser as per your choice. Let us open our website which we created earlier. Now that we know what are built-in content types, let us create some custom content types. Recall the introduction to content type. We had learnt not to stuff everything into the body. We are now going to learn how to create custom content type. We will create an events content type that tracks all the Drupal events around the world. First, let us design on a paper what fields we need to capture for this content type. It is a good practice to do this for all new content types before creating it in Drupal. Create a table with columns for field name, field type and purpose. All Drupal nodes have title and body fields defined by default. The event name can be the title field to identify this event uniquely. Event description can be the body field to provide some plain text description. An event logo is an image to display any special logo of the event. We need an event date of type date which captures the start and end date of the event. The event can have a separate event website which is an URL link to be displayed in this content type. We will cover only these five fields in this tutorial. Later, we will learn to include two more fields. Every event will be sponsored by a user group. User group is another content type we will create in the next tutorial. Two nodes of two different content type is linked in Drupal using the Entity Reference field. An Event Topic is a taxonomy field which is used to categorize the event under various keywords. Now let us click on Structure and then on Content Types. These are our two basic content types. Click the blue button, Add Content Type. We are going to call our new content type as events. And in the description, we will type. This is where we track all the Drupal events from around the world. You can type any text that you want here. This description will appear on the content type page. You will also notice that Drupal gave it a machine name. Here we can see it named as events. The machine name is basically the name of the table in the database that Drupal assigns the content to. In the submission form settings, change the word title to event name. On the publishing options, let's put a check mark on create new revision. This means every time a node is edited, a new version will be created. Leave the other settings as they are. Let's turn off the display author and date information. It's not important for this one. Here is something that I recommend for every content type. Click on menu settings. Under available menus, uncheck all the menus that might be checked. This will prevent a content editor from adding a thousand events to our menu structure. It ensures that others don't have the permissions to add an event to our menu item. If we want to add an event later on, we can do it manually ourselves. Click on Save and Manage Fields. Once our events content type is saved, we will see the body field. Click on Edit on the right hand side. And let's change the label to Event Description. Click on Save Settings button at the bottom. 
we have just created our first custom content type in Drupal. It is pretty limited at this point. Basically, a title and body which is the same as the basic page. Next, we will add many more fields according to our paper design and make this a lot more helpful. Click on Add Field button at the top. In Select a Field Type drop down, choose Image. In the Label field, type Event Logo. Click Save and Continue. We can upload a default image here if we want to. By clicking on Choose File button. We could also add default alternative text if we want to. We will keep the limit as one logo for each event. Click Save Field Settings. Now we get to set up all the settings for the event logo field. Most of these are contextual and are based on the field type. We can add some help text or some instructions here for our content editors. We can also check the box for required field, which means that a content item or node cannot be saved until event logo is added. We can change the file extensions that are allowed here. It is recommended not to add bitmap here. The file directory is filled in with a year and month by default. But we can change this if required. For example, you may have several content types with images. Then you can add a prefix events so that all the images of events content type will be in one file directory. Drupal allows us to name it as anything that we want. But be careful with this because we cannot change this very easily later. We can also set the maximum and minimum image resolution and a maximum upload size. Think carefully before you make changes here. Imagine you upload 2 or 3 megapixel images. You use your WYSIWYG editor to shrink it down to a few hundred pixels. Drupal still loads the 2 megapixel image and that can be really frustrating. It gets worse if they are using their mobile. And on the data plan, suddenly you made them download 2 megabytes that they didn't need to download. We must make sure that we are getting our images set properly before we upload them. What's the largest size the image should be? And what's the smallest size the image should be? Minimum image resolution in particular is very important. This field should not be smaller than the largest image size that you want to display. This will prevent Drupal from scaling the image beyond the original and making them pixelated. Set up your maximum image resolution to say 1000 by 1000 and set up your minimum image resolution to say 100 by 100 and then make the maximum upload size to 80 KB. What Drupal will do is shrink the image down to a 1000 by 1000 size and make it 80 kilobytes. And if it can't, then Drupal will reject the image. It will be better to make this 600 by 600 pixels, which is a more reasonable size. We will check the Enable All field and All field required checkboxes. Then click Save Settings. Now we have an Event Logo field for our content type. Let's add another field by clicking Add field. In the Add a new field drop down, choose Link. In Label field, let's type Event Website. Click Save and Continue. Immediately, we are prompted to specify the allowed number of values. We will just have one value for that. Click Save Field Settings. Once again, the screen gives us the contextual settings for our link field. Under Allowed Link Type, we have the options Internal Links Only, External Links Only, and both Internal and External Links. Next, we can specify whether we are going to make 
allow linked text as disabled, optional, or required. We will leave that as optional for now and see how that works. Go ahead and click Save Settings. Once again, click Add Field. This time, we will choose the Date field. Type the label as Event Date. Click Save and Continue. We will leave the value at 1 for now. In the Date Type drop-down, choose Date Only option. Click Save Field Settings. Once again, we get the Contextual Settings page. Here, let's change the default date to current date. Click Save Settings. Now, we have two more fields to add here, but we cannot add them yet. We will cover those in the upcoming tutorials. With this, we come to the end of this tutorial. Let us summarize. In this tutorial, we have learned about creating a new content type and adding fields to content type. This video is adapted from Acquia and OS Training and revised by Spoken Tutorial Project IIT Bombay. The video at this link summarizes the Spoken Tutorial Project. Please download and watch it. The Spoken Tutorial Project team conducts workshops and gives certificates. For more details, please write to us. Spoken Tutorial Project is funded by NMEICT, Ministry of Human Resource Development and MVLI, Ministry of Culture, Government of India. This is Gautam Narayanan signing off. Thanks for joining.